And you're welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Today we're going to be looking at everything that concerns workers, the welfare of workers, you know, the things that the employers and the employees need to know. Focusing as well on the mental health of employees. After all, it is our day. It is our May 1st Workers' Day. Today we're joined by two members of the Chartered Institute of Personal Management. They're both entrepreneurs and business persons and have contributed to the development of making business policies and just pushing all that concerns HR forward. Today I have on my immediate right, um, Bisola Alo Busola Alofe. She's a highly versatile and deeply experienced business leader with an extensive portfolio of consulting, human resource management, organization, and capability development success in her close to 30 years of working in different industries and companies in Nigeria and abroad. It is a delight to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having Welcome. me. Welcome. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. And on my um, left, um, further down, we have Adeyemi Ajayi, he is a professional accountant and an external editor, and he has worked as internal control officer and risk management a manager in you know several banks and has worked as pioneer head risk management department of you know several projects as well. He's currently the project manager of Envio Fab Landfield Project, and today they are going to be our guests to discuss all that concerns HR and the welfare of Nigerian employees. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. welcome. So maybe before we go into the conversation, it's important to understand why you both are the perfect people to have this conversation. So maybe if you can let us know the work that CIPM does. So uh, thank you very much for that. Um, I'm very proudly Nigerian. So no matter what it is I've done or where I've worked, I carry the Nigerian flag. And um, it's very important to me that as a business leader and an HR professional, that in the workplace, the you know, rights of people, um, the things that matter to people at work, the things that they desire, the things they aspire to, that organizations actually take note of those things and blend it into the business of work. All right, it's important that you mention that because, you know, when we're discussing this, we want to know why you have the right to be discussing this topic, you know, that concerns the welfare of um, the Nigerian employees, so which is why what will lead me to my next question. Okay. Looking today at the welfare of the Ni the average Nigerian employee, do you would you say that we're properly catered to? Uh, not at all. You know, uh, incidentally, I was part of those who uh, presented papers for the minimum wage review at several you know uh, platforms. We had a discussion. Uh, it will surprise you to know that the Federal civil service welfare policy is not, you know, really robust enough to take care of the workers. Mm -hmm. So that goes to tell you that even the minimum wage has some other things that will react around, you know, this. So uh, let's even leave the public sector. Let's come to the private sector. There are a lot of casualization that uh, the Labour Congress are fighting against, and a lot of decimations at workplace, you know, coming to the fact that a lot of workers are really been underpaid, if I use the word, and not been really cared for. Uh, some have been perceived as slaves, you know, they're at the mercy of the employer. So a lot of things go on and nobody's really uh, ready to come to the rescue of some of these uh, empl uh, employees. Speaking of um, workers in different companies seeing themselves as slaves, a couple of days ago we were talking about Nigerians complaining that um, internationally owned companies, that's companies owned by foreigners in Nigeria, that they were underpaid in those companies. And then, you know, sometimes even leaving the job was not so much of an option either, because you would leave and it would likely take time before you get another. But whereby this is happening in their own country, shouldn't there be some measures that should be put in place by somebody or bodies in Nigeria concerning the Nigerian worker? be it in the private sector or in the public sector, saying you cannot do this because in the U.S. there are things you can't do to some workers from some other countries too. So there are people that will actually come for you. But in mm. Nigeria, it doesn't really apply, especially when you don't know someone. So what are the things that can be done? Well, mm. I wouldn't say that in Nigeria it doesn't apply. Um, if you go into the private sector, so I've worked largely in the private sector, from years and years and years, every company or practically, well, most companies have employee relations department, labor relations department, where they have the responsibility to look after those kinds of things, the things that 
are not savory in the workplace, things that management should not be doing, taking advantage of people and things like that. So there are standard grievance procedures that companies are usually meant to have. And if you go into the Nigerian labor law, there are you know, a number of clauses in there that actually state the accountability and obligations of companies to their workers in terms of the rights of employees. So um, I wouldn't say there's nothing. I would say there's a lot. What you find is mixed compliance. So a lot of companies actually do very well. Um, it doesn't mean that there aren't areas you know, for improvement, but I've worked in at least six companies and you know, large global international companies that work in Nigeria and abroad. And my experience has never been that workers don't have a voice and that you know, they just have to sit back and take whatever is meted out at them. Um, they have a voice. They can go to the human resource department and talk to HR there and talk, uh, air their grievances and get that addressed through the grievance procedures. And the employee relations or industrial relations department tends to be a whole unit on its own that has connections with the National Labor Congress, with the unions. And there are different channels for the voices to be heard. But again, like I said, that's not to say that there aren't malpractices and there aren't some companies that actually treat a, a, a labor as slaves. So we know that that happens. All right, speaking yeah. about the malpractices, flowing from what you just said, and in your experience as a, a HR expert, what would you say are some of the most common complaints that employees of labor you know, express? What are some of the most common challenges and mm -hmm. difficulties that they, exp they um, experience? So, um, you know, you were saying something about global companies, you know, international companies that mm -hmm. work in Nigeria and, you know, treat people as slaves. You know, again, slavery, you know, it's a global topic today. If you watch CNN Heroes and the, the slavery, uh, the project that they, they work on. Um, because we have a challenged economy in Nigeria, let me put it that way, with a very huge population, that perception that the Nigerian worker can't do anything. And so some companies take advantage, so they work on holy hours, a lot of casualization, which my colleague here mentioned. Um, you could work, you know, work in a company for 20 years, but you're not actually a permanent staff, and so you're not eligible for pension. So what happens to you when you reach retirement age, 60, um, and you, know, you, you need to continue your life, uh, but there's nothing for you to fall back on? Things like that happen. We talked about international companies here, you know, where we have Oyimbo, uh, managers and supervisors that kind of in our own country treat people very very badly that happens so people complain about that of course people will always complain about the pay the pay is not enough and, and so on and so forth so those are some very very common ones um, are there some that you would uh, like to mention yeah, and yeah. once you're answering that also look at some of the most um the the things that employers need to know. Let's let's speak to the employers. We'll still come back to speak to employees. What are some of the things that employers of labor need to know to achieve maximum productivity and output? Okay, uh, coming back to what employers need to know, uh, I still want to address a little bit from what she said. Uh, there is a practice coming up, especially with this one-man business stuff. Uh, a lot of these people treat uh, employees uh, as if they're not really important. You know, you get employee fired just for very flimsy things. Though there are cases in industrial, national industrial courts, now employees are getting to know their rights. They're putting their feet forward to really ask questions. They want to get uh, justice. You know, they want, to, they want to fight for their rights. There are a lot of things happening, you know, in that regard. But talking about some foreign companies that still treat uh, you know, Nigerians badly. We've had stories, but I don't think it's really uh, that common like it used to be because we're having stronger fronts. People are coming forward to talk and, you know, uh, employers are careful. Now, what do employers need to know? Picking from there, uh, employers need to know that the, the perception of people have changed. People are now really your brand, not even your product anymore. So you have to be very careful the way you treat your people. You have to be very careful the way you manage your workforce. You have to also be very careful about several uh, laws and uh, policies being uh, issued out by government and government agencies. So the level of compliance is now what business owners should know and they should be ready to comply. Because people 
are now even given information about organizations that are not complying, whether from inside or from outside. So employers have to be very careful. They have to be very careful about how they even conduct their own businesses. You know, so it starts from how you value your people. Any employer that doesn't value its people, I mean, will not really go far. If I could uh, continue from that a okay, little bit. Yes, Look, please. I run a company, right? My company is set out to do certain things and make a profit. However, I will achieve that only if my people are productive. So um, employers must understand the power and the importance of people in their organizations. If people are not treated well, if they're not connected with the reason of being of that company and feel like they're part of that organization, then the people in that company are not going to give their best. If people are treated well, if they're cared for, if they're given a voice in the companies where they work and they're allowed to contribute, Nigerians are very intelligent people. We're smart and we can achieve a lot. If um, employers understand the value they can get from their people and treat their people right. And you know, when you say employers, employers can sound vague. It's the leaders in the organization because it's the people, the managers, the supervisors that um, connect with the people on a day-to-day -day basis. It's the leaders there that treat them right or treat them wrong. And the leaders must understand that they, if they treat people well, care for people, and people can see how their own personal dreams are being achieved by working in such organizations, I honestly can assure every business owner that you'll be seeing up to double or triple productivity levels. And it's important, like he was saying, because we're in a socially networked world right now, if you treat your workers wrongly, badly, you know, mess them up, they're going to go on social media. Very true. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's look at, for example, um, our lecturers in the universities. Now, I remember a certain lecturer of mine, he took it upon himself to change the narrative. So what he would do then is he would bring, he was an engineer who turned into a lawyer. So he would actually get laptops to class and tell everybody, let's do you know, a deed on a laptop. I want you guys to practice what you would learn in law school. Now, by the time that was happening, he got a name for it. People saw him as the WhatsApp lecturer. And guess what? He had everybody engrossed in his class and a lot of people passed. I'm talking about a conducive environment. Yeah. I'm talking about good machinery to make work easier. This is something that a lot of companies lack. <coughs> people have complained. And you, employers are saying, we want better you know, productivity from you. But you don't make the environment conducive for this person. And the person can't turn, you know, give you what you've not given to them. So how are the ways, aside concerning machinery, you know, and productivity, what are the things that employers can do for their employees? Because remember, when they do these things, they will make more profit, they will gain better. Yeah, I, I think uh, reacting to that, a lot of employers, apart from providing the tools to work, mm. they should also provide this sense of responsibility, mm. which is very important. Uh, apart from sense of responsibility, you should see yeah. your employees as your partners. Mm. They are your partners. And in fact, in, in line of resources, you have the human resource, the financial resource, the physical resource. Uh, out of these three, the very important one, uh, the people. So you have to understand people's psychology. You also have to lay down a system that will make people to be themselves not feel like they are outside, but they are working for you inside. So uh, what, what I'm trying to say is don't breed employees that are your enemies. Mm. Very Would important you, yeah. to not breed, breed employees, employees that, that are your enemies. enemies yeah. Let's talk about the mental health of workers in Nigeria. Are, yeah. we, are we paying adequate attention to mental health of workers in Nigeria? We're, daily we're seeing people, you know, you hear a situation of someone slump in the office, people that are dealing with depression. What can we do to make, first of all, are we doing enough to protect the mental health of the Nigerian worker? If not, what can we do better? So thankfully, I've worked in a company, a global company, where it is very, very important and a lot is done. But I do know that many organizations are not in Nigeria. We're not paying enough attention to the mental health of workers. And you know, when we talk about mental health, we have to remember that it's about the brain and then the total well-being of people. I was at a conference recently where some um, really great advocates of mental health in the workplace came to 
um, talk with us. And I learned so much about mental health and what organizations should be doing. Um, so first of all, very simply, every organization should have a basic and fundamental health and safety program in the workplace. These are the general principles around work, around the work environment, making sure that it is safe for people to come to work and go home every day. That should be standard. Second of all, the work processes, right? People should understand, it should be clear to people what it is they need to do and how they need to do it. And um, if there are challenges, then people should be able to voice out their concerns. But also leaders should be able to encourage their workers to bring their ideas out for addressing problems. So becoming part of the solution. Those things are very important. Third, like I was talking about leaders in, um, earlier on, if I'm happy at work, you better believe that a lot of it has to do with the work environment I'm in. So the boss and then the people around, which speaks to the culture of my unit. If we have a toxic leader, it's likely that the team is going to be toxic. And if, if you have to toxic teammates and the leader is somebody that doesn't pay attention, still it's going to be a toxic environment. And those things rub on the well-being and mental health of the worker. In, in the work environment. So something else that um, our companies should do is really the human resources department should focus on um, employee assistance programs that actually target the health, mental health of people in the workplace. You know, human resource professionals, we deal with people as resources, understanding people, opening up to them and building the trust such that they can come and talk with us about whatever it is they're experiencing. Uh, but that requires trust. It's very important and then we need to protect the confidentiality of those discussions. So if we have that kind of an environment, our, the workers will feel free and open to discuss what is bothering them, whether it's a work related. Sometimes it's actually stuff that's going on at home. Yeah. If the home is not settled and you know, happy and peaceful, you, it's likely we're gonna have grump, grumbled em, employees in the workplace. And all of those things contribute to affecting the mental health of, of people. Uh, and one of the things I also learned was that it's important for us to do mental health assessments. You know, the speaker that I, you know, I quote, I'll quote this, he, he made a very, it was funny, but it's very true. Regularly, we go to hospital for health checks, medical checks, right? Uh, it's, usually, it's a routine these days. Do it annually if you're a certain age. Do it maybe once in two years. But do people actually do mental health checks? to check the wellness of their thoughts and the things that are deep inside relative right. to what they're going through. I'm glad so those things are you know, important. You, you've yeah. really expatiated on a lot of the things that we need to do to build, um, encourage better mental health care for workers. I have a question asking, you know, as a woman, but let's take a call from Fumi calling from Lagos. Hello, Fumi. Good evening. Thank you for calling. Hello. Hi, good evening. Good Thank evening. you very much for calling. Yeah, I... We can hear you for me. Please go ahead and um, make it quick. I'm listening to the program now. I'm seriously, I'm interested because I've seen this in a furniture film that doesn't even. Hello, can you hear me? Go ahead, yes, we can, yes, hear, we can you. hear you. All right. I work, I work in a furniture film that doesn't even know what health is. I mean, there's either bad as there's no paracetamol in the clinic. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yes, it's as bad as that. And the um, map of the kind is a Lebanese company anyway. Maybe that's why it's like that. I feel our, I don't know, maybe the senior staff there, they could not get to an agreement before now for some basic things. And now you're falling back on the junior staff and that when the junior staff raise any there's an issue, they'll be like, ah, this, this junior staff, they like chop. But it is not chop. It as a right. All right. They don't. They don't agree for anything. I don't know okay. if there's a way any. Um, how do I put this now? Any organization can, can come into like that, so right. that people can they can know their right to a point. Okay. We don't have anything else. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for contributing. We have one more call before we wrap up this. Um, comrade calling from Lagos as well. Thank you for calling. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Okay, 
Um, unfortunately, yeah. it's like we lost that. I, I, I'm sure you understood what she said. Yeah. Now, in answer to that question, I'd also like you to deal with this issue more because you're a woman. Mm -hmm. Now, you talked about the fact that if the home front is not balanced, you cannot function well at work. A lot of women have started to campaign for offices to make provision for daycares or crutch or just, you know, some other facility, not for free because mm -hmm. they will deduct it from your salary, but just something that will give you that balance. You can bring your child to work. Mm -hmm. Some organizations, some global organizations, I've seen organizations that do that, yeah. but that's not the norm in Nigeria. Is that, how important is this and how possible is this ever going to happen in Nigeria? Um, so we're talking about, uh, we're starting to touch on diversity and inclusion. So women in the workplace, gender balance and things like that. Like we've been talking uh, about it uh, in this conversation, people matter in the workplace. Remember, people are made up of men and women. And statistics show these days that you probably have like a 50-50 representation of women to men, even in the national makeup of Nigeria and several countries. But also science shows that gender balanced teams actually deliver higher productivity. So a company that wants to succeed and excel, it's very important to take, to pay attention to the things that affect women in the workplace. So, you know, imagine a graduate uh, coming out of uni is probably 25, 20, you know, around that mid-age, probably not married, but within the next two to so years will get married, get into childbearing age. And these are part of life matters. So organizations should prepare for the life matters that will affect their workers, whether, and particularly, you know, a lot of it has to do with women, but also we've started to hear about paternity leave, for example. Mm -hmm. But I will praise, you know, really uh, praise the Nigerian government. You know, recently we've increased maternity leave to four months in, in Nigeria, which is a great step forward. And a lot of individual companies are doing, uh, putting in place programs that help uh, our female workers to um, be able to concentrate and feel comfortable at work, knowing that the family, especially if their children are young, they have babies and so on and so forth, are, are well taken care of. These are all things that companies should do, and it falls a lot on the leaders, but also the human resource team, you know, to care and think about these things and then put plans and programs in place. Okay, before I take your last words on the show today, I have a very, very important question. It's about people who discover their talent and inside of them while still on the workplace. And I'm directing this to do to you. Now, some people start up being employed in a certain unit okay. and then they discover that they will do better in another unit. Now, there's an issue of the employer, you know, agreeing to transfer them when they show prowess and promise that I can actually do this better than where I started. Don't you think that should be made provision for also in the workplace? Yeah. Uh... There's something that we call our talent realignment, mm. yeah, meaning someone can leave a particular unit to go to another unit. Uh, it's happening, and a lot of employers uh, are ready to do that. If they know that you can deliver the values, they don't stop you. Mm. Uh, some of the things, again, that uh, employees need to do is to convince those employers that they can really do. There's a difference between your wish, your passion, and what you can deliver on. So if it's just your wish at the end of the day, I mean, I, you, there's no proof, there's no evidence that you can really do that. Uh, an employer would not ordinarily not give you that chance because they're not there to gamble, True. you know. So another thing is if they see that you have the potential, definitely they'll push you there because you are doing it in their own favor. The way you're building yourself, you're also doing it in their own favor. So it's happening. Talent realignment is just things that, you know, it's everywhere, and people are getting more than what they even come in to do in organization. You can have a lawyer going into marketing, IT, and all that. So at the end of the day, you see some blanks everywhere. I mean, you have two lawyers on this set. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for joining so us. It's, it's been a delight having you. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.